Can a Raspberry Pi in your motor really scan number plates and find out if the driver still owes the bank? Let's see. All right, folks, today we've taken the Raspberry Pi 5 and we've turned it into a proper wee number plate recognition app. All right, it powers up, scans the road, and here's the daft bit. We've even got a system to work out how many of these cars might still be paying off their loans. Who knew a Pi could double up as a traffic cop and a bank manager. Let's get out on the road and see what it can really do. Talk you through the individual components and how they work. So, obviously, to begin with, we have a Raspberry Pi with uh, the AI hat, 13 tops edition, attached to it. Um, we obviously need to power the Raspberry Pi. So what we're doing for that is we have a USB-C connector which is plugged into the cigarette lighter or 12 volt output. I have quite a high power uh, converter which gives enough power to the Raspberry Pi to power it and a USB camera. So for the USB camera, uh, we're using a 1080p webcam uh, connected via, via USB. Uh, I'm have an app on the Raspberry Pi which will connect to my phone uh, directly and then there is a UI uh, so we can connect directly over Wi-Fi to the Pi and control it um, for our our pipeline. So it's a multi-stage pipeline um, which I'll get into a little bit later on. Uh, so I think probably the first step will be to connect everything up and we can go for for a little drive together and see if we can find some number plates and also uh, run some OCR on them and we'll also check the Norwegian databases to see when these cars were registered and also if they have any loans so we can work out if someone's taken a loan out on the car so it's an interesting interesting thing where we're going to just drive around get a lot of data and then see what percentage of cars that we're driving past actually have finance on them i'm not really sure the 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 real world uh applications of this but it seemed like an interesting project to see uh, how many people own their cars and how many people don't so yep yeah. Here we have the camera, uh, I have a very advanced mounting method uh, using masking tape so we can just stick, stick that down onto the dashboard. Now we will plug in our USB. Plug into the Pi, plug the camera into the Pi, make sure it's the high speed slot. Okay, there we go, looks like this. Now we can turn the car on, which will give power to the Pi and start everything up. go. Now I'm going to turn the phone on and open up the personal hotspot. So hopefully the Pi starting up now should pair. There we go, it's paired. You can see uh, there is a green icon here to show that uh, the Pi is connected to this. So this is on, on 5G mobile network at the moment. But I can also connect directly to the Pi. There we go. We have our car phone detector UI. So 
now I'm going to click the start recording button and this will turn on the camera and we'll begin to record. Yes, yeah, so we're recording. Now we can uh, go out for a short drive, see if we can find some cars, see if we find some number plates on them. Let's go. just passed a 1950s tractor. I'm not really sure whether uh, that's likely to have a loan out on it. We have a number of, here we have a number of captures that we've captured. And uh, now the next step is we can run inference on them. Uh, so let's do this as a multi-step process instead of real time, um, just because we're really interested in the response rather than a real time solution. Um, I was finding that um, to achieve maximum 30 fps uh, to try and really get as many number places as possible it's better to do the post processing afterwards so we have this nice little run inference button which will run the number plate segmentation model that we trained in the last video uh, please watch that to find out how we trained our own model and this is gonna yeah run these videos through inference and uh, find some number plates um, and save the crops in a different directory uh, and then we can run OCR on them as a, as a next step and then run some external database lookups. There we go. So it's going to take a little while. Some of these files are quite large. Uh, so, yep. Sit back and relax. I'm sure we'll be here in the pie starting to use a little bit of fan as it gets hotter and working hard. Okay, that's our inference finished. Uh, let's run some post-processing. This is going to hit an external OCR service that we've put together. We're running a Paddle OCR, which I've found is the best one that works for me. Uh, unfortunately, Paddle OCR doesn't easily work on the Raspberry Pi. So what I've done is I've made a very simple API on an x86 machine. Uh, there's a GitHub link in the description to have your own little API for Paddle OCR running on CPU, it seems to be significantly better than the other option that I tried, which was um, Easy OCR. I also tried using OpenAI, uh, using GPT-40 Mini, which actually worked really quite well, but the issue being that it, it works out to be very expensive very quickly. I mean, not crazy expensive, but I had like $30 in my account, and then I ran a couple of videos through, and then boom, I had $20, so it was like $10 in API requests over a short period of time. Also ran into issues with uh, rate limiting and things like that. So, I mean, I think using LLMs and OCR is great, uh, but why would you build your business on an external service when you can use things like Paddle OCR, which have an, a comparable level of performance and the ability to also fine tune train to the specific OCR problem that you're trying to solve. So uh, yeah, let's go. So yeah, we're just basically going through, checking for various various number plates that we have found. Uh, look here, look, found one here, registry match for UF88825. That means that it actually has a car loan against it. So yeah, we'll just basically fly through all of our detections and uh, yeah, store them in a local MySQL light, sorry, a local SQL light database. Um, I'm really a big fan of SQLite. I mean, they say that the world was built on SQLite. Believe it or not, when you've got your iPhone, uh, the messages app actually uses SQLite behind the scenes. So uh, it's basically you just find it everywhere. It's, uh, you don't need any specific servers or anything. It all just sits on disk. Uh, very easy to work with. I definitely recommend using it in your next mini project. Okay, so post-pressing is completed. Uh, we've gone through 406 crops, we've found 296 license plates, and uh, we've done 141 registry matches, um, which has uh, involved us updating 141 database records. Now we've moved all those uh, 
across the process directory so this is quite interesting uh, so it looks like we've actually got quite a lot there uh, we've saved it to our uh, SQLite database and um, yeah looking good so next step is let's have a look at our database report let's see what the stats are on the number of plates that we've found how many people have taken out loans for their cars wow so we found 61 valid records 12 have got loans 49 without loans so we've got um a th yeah five one percent of cars are under five years old um yeah distribution no loan 49 with loan 12 so we've got 20 percent loan rate that's quite interesting seems like quite a high value maybe not what do you think and uh, maybe we can download this and see it in more detail Okay, so yeah, here is our notes. It looks better on a full machine, but yeah, you can see with uh, I did this report now. Six one valid records, twelve of loan, four without loan. Nineteen sixty one. Uh, Thirty one percent cars are under five years old that were found. Um, no more details here. So yeah, it looks pretty nice. I mean, we've got a working system here. Um, Twenty percent car. Loan rate sounds reasonable. Um, so yeah, this is an interesting sort of end-to-end -end system where we've used the Pi and the AI hat to do a lot of our inference and we've captured videos on edge and we've done a little bit of processing um, off device. Um, Generally, I think you could have done everything on the Pi. We could have done the OCR on the Pi, um, but we'd have still needed HTTP calls, well, HTTPS calls to the remote databases to get information anyway. Uh, so it's a fine balance of whether you want to do everything on edge or you want to do uh, some things off device on the cloud uh, or on other infrastructure. I think really it's best to do a bit of both um, or even another more extreme approach would have been just to capture videos on the Pi and take them off, off device uh, and process them in another environment. However, I think that the biggest wins are made with doing the initial processing on edge to decrease the amount of data which uh, you need to process off device. So in this case, we've taken these, uh, in some cases, four gig videos and compressed them down to just a number of small uh, number plate crops. Uh, so it's quite a sort of efficient system. Uh, this UI uh, has been done using Streamlit, which is a very nice Python library for making simple UIs. Um, and I actually did use a little bit of Vibe coding here to help me um, build things very quickly um, without necessarily having in-depth knowledge of how to create Streamlit APIs. So it's an interesting thing nowadays with these AI agents, you can use them sparingly to uh, increase the quality, well, increase the amount of productivity that you have. Uh, you can't necessarily just give everything away to them. They struggle, for example, with Paddle OCR, it was going round and round and round, given the fact that it was trained on previous versions of Paddle OCR, and since recently they've released a new version, so all the APIs changed and it was just going round in circles so you do need to uh, use them where possible and use them to their best of their ability um okay